In this video, we're going to look at calculus exam questions. It's the third video of the questions from 2010 to 2019. The approximate length of a day in Galway, measured in hours from sunrise to sunset, sunset may be calculated using the function f of t is equal to this guy. Where t is the number of days after March 21st, and 2 pi t over 365 is in radians. Find the length of a day in Galway on June 5th, 76 days after March 21st. So f of 76, this guy, f of 76, just calculator use, is equal to 12.25 plus 4.75 by the sine of 2 pi by 76 over 365. And that's gonna give me, well, if I, I can get this into degree form, uh, so this guy, if I do 2 by 180, you can use radians on your calculator, obviously 2 over 365. It's going to give me the sine of an angle. It's going to be just under 76, 74.96 the calculator is giving me. So times 4.75 plus 12.25 is giving me 16.837. So that's the length, eight, sorry, 837 hours, which is 16 hours. And if we multiply 0 0.837 by 60, we get 50 minutes, correct, to the nearest minute. Find a date on which the length of the day in Galway is approximately 15 hours. So we're told the length of the day. So we're given the answer here. So we're gonna be looking for T. So f of t is equal to 15. Therefore, 12.25 plus 4.75 by the sine of 2 pi t over 365 is equal to 15. So I'm going to bring the, just isolate this guy on its own. Is equal to 15 minus 12.25 divided by 4.75. So that's going to be equal to. Then my calculator is giving me a, a fraction here, 11 over 19. So if we type in the inverse sign of 11 over 19, you're going to get the inverse sign of 11 over 19 will give me the angle in degree form. That's 35.37. So 2 pi t, so we're doing it in degrees, I'm going to write 360t over 365 is equal to 35.37. So t in this case, multiplying by 365, divided by 360, t is going to be 35.8. We only need the decimal. So we're looking for 36 days after March 21, 30 days after September, April, June, and November. So we've 10 days in March and then 26 days in April. So that will get me to April 26th. Find F dash T, the derivative of F of T, my well, sign goes to cos. So we're going to get F dash T to be 4.75 by the cos. Of the angle 2 pi t over 365 and if we multiply by the derivative of the angle we're going to get 2 pi over 365 which is the derivative of f of t and you could tidy it up we could multiply the 2 by the 4.75 and bring the number in front so 9.5 over 365 times pi by the cos of 2 pi t over 365. Hence or otherwise, find the length of the longest day. Okay, let's look at our function again. 12.25 plus 4.75 by the sine of something. Now, it doesn't matter what this something is. We need the max value of this something to get the length of the longest day. So we can keep a 4.75 here. So sine is max at 90 degrees, 
So we know sine max is one, so the longest day is just 12.25 plus 4.75, which is 17 hours. The next part we're asked to use integration to find the average length. Now that average length, you just jump into one over B minus A by the integral of F of X DX between the bands B and A. So we have one over, we're told here it's 184 days, one over 184, so it's the average of each of these individual intervals. And we have a 184, well, there'd be a minus zero here. So I'll put that in. And if we integrate uh, 12.25, we're gonna get 12.25t. And integrating sine goes to minus cos, so we're gonna get minus 4.75 by the cos of the angle, by the divided by the derivative of the angle. So the cos of two pi t over 365 and that's divided by the derivative of the angle which is 2 pi over 365 so that's going to give me 1 over 184 times 12.25 t minus 4.75 cos of should probably put it in a bracket 2 pi t over 365 and the fraction will invert when it comes up so we're going to get times 365 over 2 pi and that's between 184 and 0 so the next line we're putting 184 in for t and we're putting 0 in for t now a lot of times 0 doesn't give me a value but we do have this guy here is going to be equal to cos of 0 is equal to 1 so this is going to give me a value of 4.75 times 365 over 2 pi so just be careful with that part here so we're going to have 12.25 by 184 minus 4.75 by the cos of 2 by 180 by 184 over 365 i'm going to multiply that by 365 divided by 2 pi is 3.14 and then minus using your integration rules 12.25 t by 0 so we don't need that so it's just going to be the minus 4.75 by 365 over 2 pi and we're going to get the average which is 1 over 1 a 4 of these two things so obviously this is a big long sum type this twice into your calculator and um, mine is giving me 13.74 for the first part and that's dividing it by 184 as well and 1.5 for the second part so that's equal to 15.24 and we're asked for hours and minutes so that's 15 hours and 0.24 by 60 is 15 minutes to the nearest minute be careful with the calculator calculation in this question okay this next question i've left out the differentiation from first principles because you practice it so much at this point and um, we're just told that f of x is equal to 2x over x plus 2 and obviously x can't be minus 2 find the coordinates of the points at which the slope of the tangent to the curve y equals f of x is a quarter so this question is your quotient rule so my quotient rule let me write it out again just down here so i can put the derivative of the top and the bottom beside them 2x goes to 2 x plus 2 goes to 1 f prime x is on the bottom the bottom squared on the top we have the bottom by the top differentiated minus the top by the bottom differentiated so this is going to give me 2x plus 4 minus 2x over x plus 2 to be squared which is equal to just 4 over x plus 2 squared so this is the slope at any point and we're asked to find the coordinates when it's a quarter the slope is a quarter so if we left 4 over x plus 2 to be squared equal 1 over 4 we're going to get x plus 2 to be squared equals 16 so i need to solve this x squared plus 4x 
plus 4 minus 16 is equal to 0. x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. You can see it's a 6 and a 2 here. x times x. 6 is are 12. And plus 6 minus 2 is plus 4. So x is equal to 2. Or minus 6. So there are two points when the slope of the tangent's a quarter to get my y value put it back into the original so f of 2 equals 2 by 2 over 2 plus 2 which is equal to 1 4 over 4 which is 1 so my point is 2 1 and f of minus 6 is 2 by minus 6 over minus 6 plus 2 minus 12 over minus 4 which is equal to 3 so my other point is minus 6 and 3 this question is about a sprinter and its velocity this came with a picture of what looks like maybe the Olympic final at some point so we're asking part A easy enough for part 1 f of 0 0.2 so f of 0 0.2 equals minus 0 0.5 by 0 0.2 squared plus 5 by 0 0.2 minus 0 0.98 so calculator use again that's going to give me 0 show that f has a local max at 5 11.52 so we're going to need to differentiate this to get my max f prime x is equal to 2 by minus 0 0.5 so minus x plus 5 the slope at that point is 0 so x is equal to 5 and if we plug 5 back into the original equation we should get 11.52 0.5 by 5 squared plus 5 by 5 minus 0.98 so it's going to be 25 by a half is minus 12.5 plus 25 is 12.5 and if we take 0.98 away from 12.5 we're going to get 11.52 therefore max mass max 5 11.52 so this is where we're getting that this white t was zero to begin if you imagine the start of a race the starter's gun goes off and there's no velocity they're not allowed to leave the blocks before 0.2 of a second has elapsed so this is where this question comes from and we're asked to sketch this function i'm just gonna you guys are gonna put in the values here between if you imagine it starts here at 0.2 and it reaches maximum velocity we're told here at five seconds so if you put in your five and then it stays at 11.52 from five so let's say 11.52 is approximately on this line after five seconds it's approximately here this curve and this is an approximate sketch you put your values in for one two three and four along here but it it looks like this and then levels off So just filling in our values here for this interval between 5 and 0.2 or 0.2 and 5. Integrate, put in your values, swipe it into your calculator and it's giving me 36.864 meters. And it doesn't ask me to round it off so I'll leave it at that. Then we're asked to find the, the finishing time for the race. So we have the velocity is equal to 11.52 that's what he gets up to after five seconds actually equal to to five seconds so if we can get the distance traveled um, in that time which is going to be after five seconds he's already gone 36.864 so 100 meters take away 36.864 meters it's going to give me 63 and I'll round this off here 
0.136 well no i'll leave it i'll leave it at 136 meters so that's the distance the speed he's going at is 11.52 so that's going to give me 5.48 seconds plus the five seconds at the beginning and this was an extremely slow 100 meters 10.48 seconds in total this is a spherical snowball question it's melting at a rate so we're looking at a chain rule here proportional to its surface area spherical so just in all these questions the volume of a sphere is equal to four thirds pi or cute so what can we get with this we can get the vdr may as well write that down now the vdr is 4 pi r squared which is also its surface area so we're asked to show that the radius is decreasing at a constant rate so that's the vdt the rdt the vdt is the volume decreasing over time which i'm going to write out here is the vdr by we need a dt on the bottom and we need to get rid of that dr so that's the radius over time is this third one here so because they tell us that it's melting at a rate proportional to its surface area and that the rate at which its volume is decreasing so that's the vdt so the rate at which its volume is decreasing at any instant is proportional to its surface area so that's a constant that means the vdt is equal to a constant which we'll call x times the surface area which is 4 pi r squared now if i then sub that back into here i can get x times 4 pi r squared is equal to dv dr which we've worked out to be 4 pi r squared times dr dt which we don't know what it is now we can divide across by 4, 4 pi r squared and we can see here that x is equal to the rdt which is the constant that we were looking for in this question and that proves that the radius of the snowball is decreasing at a constant rate second part of this question if the snowball loses half its volume well the volume is four thirds pi r cubed in an hour so that's time equals one hour how long more will it take to melt completely to the nearest minute okay so we're looking at so let's say this is the initial volume and this is after one hour so what has changed between these two things the volume is still going to be four thirds pi or cubed so the only thing that's changed here the only unknown in the volume is radius so the radius has changed so let's call them r1 and r2 so we'll call the initial one r1 at the beginning so four thirds pi r1 to be cubed would be this initial volume so if it loses half its volume half its volume is going to be two thirds pi r1 to be cubed and that's equal to the volume after one hour which is four thirds pi times well we call this one r2 or 2 to be cubed so we can definitely simplify this down and get r1 and r2 into it so if we divide by 3 or multiply by 3 and then if we divide by 4 we're gonna get and cancel the pi's as well we're gonna get a hat we're gonna get 2 over 4 or 1 over 2 or 1 cubed is equal to we divide this one before or two to be cubed so so if we can get r2 in terms of r1 if i write this as r1 cubed over two equals r2 cubed and if i want r2 i could say r2 if i get the cube root of both sides that's going to be r2 would be equal to the cube root of r1 cubed which is just r1 over the cube root of two so that's R2 in terms of R1. So this will help me get my rate of change. It goes from R1 to R2 in one hour. 
So the rate of change is that it's going from R1 when it started at R2 and it goes to R1. So it started at R1 and goes to R2. It's gone from R1 and what's changing in there? It's we're changing by R1 over the cube root of 2. Because it starts at R1 and goes to R2 and this guy is R2. So we now have an equation with just one unknown in it. So that's my rate of change per hour. So the total change over the rate of change should give me time. So the total change, it goes from, well, it's to completely melt, to melt completely. So it goes to zero. So it goes from R1 to zero or minus zero. Um, and the rate of change is R1 minus R1 over the Q root of two. Now, what can we do here? We can divide everything by R1. So that's gonna give me one over one minus um, and that's going to be 1 over, because we're dividing by R1, the cube root of 2, and that's just a number now. So we type that into our calculators. That's going to give me 3.847 hours. And we're asked for it in nearest minute. So that's 3 hours, 51 mins. 180 and 51 is 231 minutes. So probably the toughest question that's come up in calculus, this rate of change and snowball melting. Now you could make a question like this up yourself where it might only lose a third of its volume in an hour or a quarter of its volume and the same math is involved. So maybe challenge yourself to do a couple of those. And then finally, this last question in the calculus section, A is the closed interval 0, 5 and they're telling us that is A, X is between 0 and 5 for A. And the function A, F of A, these really kind of complicated things they put at the start of a function but really what are we dealing with here we're dealing with a cubic function and we're asked for the max and the minimum values so we know to get max and min we differentiate so f prime x is 3x squared minus 10x plus 3 we have to let that equal zero because of the slopes so this is a cubic starts low ends high so my max and my min slope is zero. So does this should factorize for us? They always do. Three x times x. You can see here three threes are nine, and one is ten. So yeah, x is equal to a third or three. So I need to plug this back in. F of a third. See which one is the max and which one is the min. Is equal to a third cubed minus five by a third squared plus three by a third plus five that's going to give me a fraction 148 over 27 f of three is going to give me three cubed minus five by three squared plus three by three plus five and that's going to give me minus four so my point is 1 over 3, 148 over 27, and 3 minus 4. So this is my max and my min. The lower y value is this one, min and max. Now, if we do, we're asking the last part here, state whether f is injective. So the, inject, the easy way to do injective is do a horizontal line. If it goes through the function more than once, it's not injective, and you can see here, it's not one-to-one -one mapping that we would require for an injective function. So, and that's probably the best solution, not one-to-one -one mapping, like a linear equation. So not injective. So have fun practicing all these exam questions. Practice makes perfect.